So my inspiration for this art project is this beach scene. I took up bass fishing this summer and I spent a lot of time looking out over the water. So today I'm going to do a paint pour and I'm going to attempt to capture some of those deep blue colors that I saw in the water and in the sky. Right, so I have these three four inch by four inch scrap tiles. They're not very big. They're kind of coaster size. So we'll see what I can come up with for those. So what I'm going to do, I have this little shot glass, a little plastic shot glass. I've put some blue paint in here. That's just like a phthalo blue. And I'm going to add some other paint to this tiny little cup. So I'm going to add, there's some, like the dark blue, phthalo blue. I'm adding some cerulean blue, a tiny bit of aqua green, just pouring it in on top there. This is a flip cup technique that I'm going to try on these little tiles. I'm thinking this is going to be a good amount of paint for a tile this size. Tiny bit of turquoise tiny bit of phthalo green, so not very much of any one color. And I'm going to add a little bit of gold and I will top it up with some white. Now I've added, this is a metallic white. It's got, it's just like a plain white with some glitter in it, which I quite like. Now what I'm going to do, I have this little cup here and I have filled two other little cups with the same colors but in a different order. So I would expect that each of these tiles is going to come out quite different. So here I've got another little cup of paint and a third little cup of paint. All the same colors, just in a different combination. And then I'm going to take the tile, put it, try to center it on top, and then flip it over. Just let that sit there. I have it propped up on other little cups just so that it will give it some chance to drip over the sides. And I've got the third one. Now I'm just going to let that sit for a couple of minutes just to let the paint kind of settle down and run together, run out of the cup onto the tile. So I've just waited about a minute. I've let those sit and now I'm just going to slowly lift up the cup and let the paint just flow over the tile. So it runs out onto the tile. So it's going to be different for each one, even though it's the same colors. Let's just let that flow. Now I'll let this one flow. So that one had the blue on the bottom. Oh, that's interesting. This one had the white on the bottom. And just the way my paints are, I'm not using all the same brand of paint, so the paints tend to be a little bit different from one another. And so they mix differently. Some are heavier, some are lighter. Oh, this is quite interesting how the same technique is going to get me some different results. Same amount of paint on each one as well. I really like working with the tiles because they're nice and stiff and steady. They don't sag. I find sometimes working with canvases they can sag a bit in the middle from the paint. I'm just going to let this run a little bit. This is so interesting. And each one is just a little bit different from the other. Try to stretch it to the corners. Ah, the thing about paint pouring that's so interesting to me is that it just changes, that you let the paint sit and it'll change. 
because the paint just flows a bit. When you add the paint pouring medium to paint, it makes it fairly liquidy and then it will flow. Look at that, I'm dripping paint from one of them to the other. So as you can see, my beachy colors are kind of coming to life here. I added some glitter to my white paint and a little bit to the blue paint. So it not, I don't want all the paint colors to glitter, but having a little bit of glitter just to me adds some of that typical glitter that you get the glitter for me is the sun reflecting off the water when you look out over the water. And on a sunny day, when you get it's the ripples in the water and the sun's reflecting off all those ripples, it's just like a sea of diamonds. And I just love that look. So these are quite interesting. And they're so small, but they're just sweet. This is a little piece of beach because of the really cool beachy colors. So I have three very different looking little squares here because I put the colors in a different order. Same amount of paint, same size tile, same color paints. So I'm really hoping that this inspires you to do some different things to bring the beach back into your home with you. So check this out. So after I let this sit for a couple of days and as the paint dried, it turned really dark. And I got all these really dark blues coming out and dark turquoise. And there's lots of little gold fleck coming up from the gold paint. I just love the colors that I got. So my lesson of the day for this video is that when it comes to paint pouring, you really don't know what you're gonna get. So even the way I left this, it, I thought it would look a certain way but after it dried it looked quite different. So next thing I did was I put two coats of Minwax Polyacrylic Clear Gloss on here to protect the paint and I'm going to put these, I have these little foam, thin foam things you get a, at a craft fair so, or at a craft store rather. I'm going to put one of these on the back of each one. I'm going to orient them so that the darker color comes towards the top and I'm going to make fish because this reminds me so much of being at the bottom of the ocean and I'm inspired by my bass fishing this summer. So I'm going to use some white sea, sea glass because the sea glass, the white color will really show nicely on this dark blue paint. And I'm going to make one bass fish at the bottom of the ocean on each of these tiles. And they just make the cutest little paintings to have in your home. And it reminds me so much of the beach. So thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope you found it inspiring and I hope it gives you some ideas of things that you can do to bring those beach colors into your home through art. So I hope you make it out to the beach and until next time, happy sea glass hunting.